Well, welcome. Today we are talking about how to review a case report or a manuscript. Uh, this is a specific presentation for those who have not done this and then they don't do it on a regular basis. If you have already have a research background of MPH, PhD, or you are doing uh, the manuscript reviews and all those things when you have a in-depth knowledge of methods and the statistical section and things like that too, uh, probably this is not for you. Somebody who's looking to maybe a medical student or somebody who has not done these reviews before. Uh, my name is Dr. Rahul Kashyap. Uh, I, I've listed some of the journals. I am editor or guest editor or topic editor, and then being part of some editorial boards, and then some of the journals which I've reviewed uh, in last uh, seven, eight years uh, as well. This list is not complete by any means. So just to give a brief on a uh, case report because some, that's the most common uh, part you most of you will start your review journey as well the case report is nothing but a unique case that present uh, a previously unknown syndrome or disease most of the time you'll be looking into previously unreported association of two different diseases or there is some relationship in between that as well it could be a drug drug interaction it could be disease disease interaction or if you think of un uncommon presentation of a common disease or common presentation of a unique disease, that's gonna be the uh, understanding of a case report. So if you think some of these uh, areas as well, you can always point it out. Uh, there are some outliers uh, and other features as well uh, with particular disease as well. And then, as I mentioned, there could be some unexpected response or course or diagnosis, which should not been done uh, before. Uh, writing and publishing in medical uh, literature by Lipincord in 1999, I think they have some definitions around it as well. You can watch and, and uh, read uh, that information. I'll directly jump into what you're gonna do or as you start your review. So in my journey, when I started with my professors uh, uh, at a prestigious institution, uh, when I used to get a review from him, he said, can you help me review it? And then he started putting my name into those reviews that you know he took help with his junior colleague and so on and so forth. So the way I did it and what I was taught is that I would definitely read uh, uh, a couple of times, at least one time full. I used to print it out and I would suggest you guys to print out your initial first five or six reviews when you do it. It's easy to underline or read it as well, or you have a software in your computer where you can underline, mark them and make comments on the document. You can do it, you know, try to read it in one or two settings. Like don't try to read in one setting. Sometimes you get that different perspective and you're reading in the second setting as well. Make your notes either on the paper or digitally, it doesn't matter, Th things have changed. I used to make notes uh, on the paper itself. When I printed out, I put down question mark, I put down some of my comments, doesn't make sense. Things are not matching in methods or results or uh, title and all those things, I will make all my comments and that make my life really easy. And then same time I started reading things they are citing or similar case reports or similar publication to see how others have reported and what they are reporting it. So if it's a case report, uh, you wanna see if they don't miss out any specific point as well. And we may share a checklist with you as well. That's gonna be very, very key. You all are clinicians uh, who are coming to this stage as well. I would definitely use my clinical knowledge and judgment to see if the case is presentation, presented rationally. You're not trying to find the mistakes in the case. You're trying to find that information they may have or you would have if you're writing a case report. And then that might have been omitted or maybe they might just have missed out. So you can suggest those things as well. Always think of that if you're treating this case or writing this case, what information would you add or what information would be good for readers to add it as well. So if you have that mindset, it's going to help you define writing your review of that particular case report or particular manuscript. Uh, last but not least in this, these steps are be kind. I would definitely practice this. Anybody's case report you are reviewing, they are your colleagues either in the same field or different field. Be kind, but be assertive. Point, letting your point known to them, it's a good idea where you can, you are giving them suggestion to make the paper better, make the case report better as well. Give them the feedback that they can work on. Uh, give them resources. You can send them some uh, another papers which they need to sign. Uh, they need to cite. They can send them checklist opportunities, and I'll share some of them as well. In a sense, or they, you can send a case report which is written differently and better way, and you can give it. Usually, avoid sending your own publication to them. Uh, Sometimes the journal editors red flag you if you are you are advertising your own work. Uh, but you can pick up any common case report from somebody else or checklist and as well. So read well, a couple of times, print it out, whatever works for you as well. Use your clinical judgment and then think of that if you'll be writing this case or you'll be treating this patient, what information you'll be needing or providing and then practice kindness in this regard. Now, the step four and kind of divide into full thing. I would like you to bring out these, these three main areas, some low hanging fruits, uh, low hanging areas, a little bit uh, uh, more and then high impact. Low hanging areas are, first of all, you can always comment on the grammar, spelling mistakes, or content flow, if they're repeating themselves, if the things are written in background should be part of discussion, things written in discussion should be part of background. Some of these basic stuff, which you can make them as a minor comment. Minor comment usually go in the bottom. You wanna keep your four to five major comment, and then you can have several minor comment, if not two or three minor comment, which are grammar, spelling mistakes, and content flow-wise kind of thing as well. 
So I would strongly advise you to think uh, these are your low hanging fruits. You know, you can use any any software, you can use your own English knowledge, or you can use nowadays, uh, you know, you, there's an editor button in the Word, Microsoft Word document. It can tell you, and then you can actually suggest those things, three or four of them. Don't start criticizing every single sentence if that's a problem. Write down, give them example on first paragraph and tell them in first paragraph itself, there are like five of these areas they need to improve on and rest of the manuscript require a proper English revision. And that could be your major comment one if you're talking about that part of it. But be careful, making sure that, you know, don't uh, don't promote uh, disparity. If you see foreign name or non-English or uh, uh, Caucasian names and then you start commenting on every single paper that it needs a grammar and spelling mistakes, people will do the same thing to you as well. So make sure that you're not creating a disparity. If generally there's a problem in grammar or spelling mistake, bring it out uh, as well. There's no tolerance for a spelling mistake. Everybody has all these softwares. People should not have anything. So keep your... Uh, uh, now the second part you can focus on, uh, and this is another thing which can you can rely on. You don't have to have a clinical, you don't have to have a research background in it. The clinical findings, the pathophysiology of the particular diagnosis or disease, and details on management. Those are the area which will give you moderate impact or high impact areas where you can actually comment about things. Can you please provide more information? The pathophysiology, not talking about this thing, can you add more part in there as well? That's where you become your two or three main points in your major comments section of it as well. And another point is that if they're using images and anything, there's no identifier. Usually journals do a really good job eliminating that information from the beginning. But if you notice that if they have written an X-ray or chest X-ray or ultrasound image or a CT scan or MRI or anything else, they've used it as a patient's name or clinic number or something listed there. And then that comment, you can make it into your major section that you know that should be put no-no because they're violating the patient privacy rule. Now I'm, I'm bringing down high impact areas for that matter. There's a little bit of a research background or at least your experience will come in picture. I would definitely, definitely focus on the title, the abstracts conclusion or result, and the conclusion of the paper or the case report. They should be matching. Matching means what they said they are studying in the title or the findings are the same thing or similar thing they should be send, telling about what they're concluding in their abstracts result section, if it is a case report or paper, and then they should be part of their conclusion or at least the overall message coming out of it. That's a bigger impact area when you're actually helping them saying that, hey, you said something here, but you did something else and you're concluding something else, or you're using different, different terms. Uh, let's say if they're using sleep deprivation or sleep impairment or sleep disorder, it, each thing will make a different thing make sure that you know they are pretty consistent with that part so these areas is something most people miss out sometimes if the novice uh, author are writing it you'll definitely be able to find some of these mistakes the references and a background and discussion you have to make sure that you know you're following them properly sometimes uh, people uh, people don't uh, follow them and there is a mismatch either a different or wrong references listed there or uh, they are they are not in chronological order uh, so making sure that you know you pay attention to that part and then actually help them making that paper better the rule of thumb is there should not be any citation in abstract. There should not be any citation in conclusion because you're just concluding what you're doing it. If it is, may not be, it's maybe a case report or may it be a full paper. That is something you can look into as well. Another high impact area you can focus on if they're using some old references and then you end up finding some new references too. So focusing on some latest references they're doing it. Usually try to go to the actual source. If somebody's using meta-analysis and then you are actually citing one particular point, idea for the author to write and source the original author, original publication, but there are similar studies or there are different case reports and then there's an older case report and then they completely omitted a new case report. You should actually refer them saying, hey, can you please cite in this one in your discussion section because this case report is really, really important as well. I'm giving you this uh, care checklist. If you type in care case report checklist, it'll come up as a PDF. You can actually send them the link and saying, can you please follow uh, this checklist uh, whatever is applied to you and rewrite your case report based on the subheadings coming out from this checklist. So initial three points and four point two to focus on some of these areas which doesn't require a lot of research methodology knowledge around it, even though if you're new to the uh, uh, research uh, in uh, even case report piece of it. If I change this four point uh, for research manuscript, there are a few areas uh, 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 which distinct they are distinct from it. Same, same area, your low-hanging fruits, grammar, spelling mistake, and content flow is going to apply exactly the same one too. Now, here is a medium impact area that you pay attention to methods, tables, and figure. What I do when I'm reviewing some of the articles in my early days is I will read the abstract quickly, I'll read the table, I'll read the title uh, abstract, and then I'll try to uh, glance through what they do in the method section, then directly go into my tables of results. And that'll give me a bigger picture of what they're trying to do it. Then I go back, read the background, read the methods and read the results as well. And then I spend time on reading that discussion, how well they have defined it, how well they have defended, and if they miss out something as well, because sometimes there might be issues you want to point out, but they've already addressed them into discussion section. 
another big point you can uh, score is like making sure that their title result and their conclusion are matching so that is absolutely you can apply without anything you know what they talk talked in the title are they talking same thing in the results abstract result, result section and actual conclusion actual result result in their main paper as well high impact area i talked about it already now if you have a background of statistical analysis or interpretation uh, i would definitely come out that's where i built made my bulk in there i try to see if their groups are comparable in both group p values their user right tools if if there is a mismatch or there is a disc discrepancy in their demographics and then they did not adjust for those things so all that statistical knowledge come around as well uh, if you are following us on our youtube channel or a part of the grsp program we'll cover some of these things spending piece of it as well discussion i have, i have a lot of bias for discussion there is no excuse for people not to write a really good discussion because it's simple we have another video on discussion as well you follow the principle of discussion how you write your first paragraph how you write the second and third paragraph fourth and fifth paragraph you can uh, watch that video and then make your opinion about it. and you can give that hint to the authors if they have not done a really good job sometimes people start writing in discussion just the background part of it how oh, how big this problem is blah blah discussing your discussing your result against the literature and then there are certain points around it strength and weaknesses so this that's where you can make your bulk all of the six seven points give you easily five major point and then some grammar spelling mistake on omitted things you can put them into a minor section as well background and discussion citations are well done that they are always uh chronological order as needed making sure their latest reference citation as like an uh, as like in case report as well and same comment that there should not be any references in the abstract and conclusion section so those are the few points you can always make up most of the time when you're reading papers people don't do that mistake but out of every 20 30 paper out of every 10 paper you review that they you, they might end up doing it as well here the resources uh, here the resources is uh, that uh, uh, the equator guidelines if you type in equator guidelines and then if the type of study you can say case control study design uh, uh, cohort study design clinical trial or all those things you can actually give them the equator guidelines based on that they can do it as well for that you need to know what the guidelines are uh, and then once you know uh, them, then you can actually put the link into your review section that, you know, can you please follow these guidelines uh, to, to cite your paper. Last or uh, fifth point is, I would write my feedback on a Word document because if you're commenting on somebody's grammar and spelling, you don't want to have grammar or spelling mistake in your review. So that's why rather than typing directly on the uh, journal's website, I would type them into Word document. Make sure that there's no grammar mistakes and then you can copy paste the part for authors right there and part for editors sometimes you can write some confidential information for authors uh, editors as well i would definitely start with thinking through the hard work everybody goes through this process so that is the one thing i write down thank you for the opportunity to review your article here are some points that can enhance your quality of the article and things like that too tell them what they did well if you feel like uh, you know in a sense you i used to do it in the beginning now i stopped doing it i just go directly to the point which can enhance it I would write down my point as one, two, three, four, five in a point by banner. Give the links as required, equator guidelines or uh, care checklist and things like that as well. As I mentioned that, you know, make sure that your comments and spellings are checked in your own Word document. Copy that information, put there, and then you can add your confidential comments to the editor and then just submit it. Uh, your work stops here, but sometimes reviewers respond back to you and the editor send you back. Then at the time, open up carefully, uh, open up the, article submission carefully, open up your Word document because you know what you, what you submitted. And then uh, then after that, um, you can see what traction is more they have made it and check it out if they comment, they answer your comments in a point wise manner. Uh, most time case report wise or uh, publication wise, uh, publications definitely is in the process. If you're writing comment, uh, they, will, uh, they will have you uh, set, review it back once the authors have responded. If you're early part in your career, rejecting outright, if something is so outrageous that you've realized that this is really, really bad and there's no way it can be, then do the outright rejection as well. Otherwise, you can always say minor rejection or major rejection. No paper is good enough to be accepted in first go, and no paper is bad enough to be rejected by you as a junior person at this point uh, to say that, oh my gosh, I'm going to reject it. So I usually keep it uh, if I'm new uh, in minor rejection or major rejection categories. So then you get a chance to look at them again as well. And that's where you learn that, you know, what other reviewers have responded. That is another learning point for you because until you do the first review, you are blinded to other reviewers. But once they open up to the authors, then you might be able to see other reviewers comments too. And then you say, oh my gosh, I missed out something. So each review should help you learn to become better for the next review in this regard. So I think, uh, I hope that you find it useful. Please watch and like our channel and then let us know if you have any questions. Uh, the recording is going to be stopped now.